go. Yeah. For this play, this is where we wanted it. Back, looks, throws, and yes. yes. Caught! Touchdown, Detroit Lions! They did it! The Detroit Lions proved they could go on the road against a top five defense and get the job done. This is Inside the Pride presented by Soaring Eagle Casino and Resort and airing on the Lions TV network. I'm your host, Danny Rogers. After securing a 20 to 17 win over the New York Jets, the Lions have won six of their last seven games. Head coach Dan Campbell will join us to talk that win, plus the Carolina Panthers who were on the clock for a Christmas Eve showdown. Plus, defensive end Romeo Okora will join us for our player interview. First, let's head back out to New Jersey to relive the sights and sounds from week 16. Lions are on the road, getting set to face the New York Jets. Don't have to really pump this one up at all. These are two teams in the playoff race. Both need to win to stay right in that playoff race. Hey, it's real simple today. We can show our destiny. Especially these dogs right here. I've been seen. I've been seen. I need it again. Nice defensive stop by the Jets, and now they've got it. Wilson turns, gives the night, hit it to one, and drop right there. Lost a yard. Punts away. Holly Freeman under it at the Jet 47. Shakes a man there, gets to the 40, picks up a block to the 30. There he goes, left sideline 20. Cuts it back at the 10, five, and yes. so, touchdown Detroit Lions. Holly Freeman. Wilson back, wants to throw, hit sack. Taken down back inside the 45 yard line. Guess who, it's that rookie James Houston again. Kick away, it is up and it is good. So the Lions take the lead, it is now Detroit 10 and the Jets seven. Wilson's got it back. Wilson looking, looking, stepping up. Gonna get hit, gonna go down. Sack back at the 50 yard line. Romeo Okwara got him. Hey, welcome back 95. Final play of the half. Kick away, it is up and it is good. We got a 10-10 game. So here we go, 30 minutes remaining. Lions need this football game to stay in that playoff chase in the NFC. Jets feel like they need it to stay in the playoff chase in the AFC. Wilson sets in the pocket, wants to throw. Got all kinds of time, got a man out there. It's picked off by the Lions though. Coming back right side, Jerry Jacobs. Inside the 30, Jacobs 20. Jacobs runs out of bounds inside the 15 yard line. It's gonna be first and 10 Lions after a big takeaway by that defense. Hash mark left side, spot down, kick away. It is up and it is good. It is now Detroit 13 and the Jets 10. Zach Wilson moves in behind center. Single back is Carter. Wilson takes, fakes the give to Carter. Rolls right, got a man wide open. That is C.J. Uzama for the touchdown. And they do have the lead now with 4.41 to go in this game. So here we go, fourth and about a foot. Goff up under center. Justin Jackson alone back. Goff's gonna throw it. Back and looking, throws wide open left side. Brock Wright with it to the 30. Brock Wright 25, Brock Wright 20. Cuts back at the 10, to the five, yes. to the end zone. Touchdown Detroit Lions. Oh my, 51 yards. Goff to Brock Wright and the Lions are back in front. Long count, there's the snap, spot down, kick away, it is up, and it is no good, no good. Missed it to the left, Lions escape, they win it, make it six out of seven. We will never, we will never take away from a win, ever. We will never, because that's a win. It's hard to win in this league, we all know. Nobody knows better than we do, all right? It's hard to win. The reality is, we can play just a great game. It wasn't the cleanest game we played, man. There was some stuff in there. However, there again, when we needed it, each unit, man, you talk about complimenting each other. You know, we get down there, we don't quite get in offense, but we, we leave them at the two. Defense, you stick them down there. What happens, man? We talk about getting the lead. We, talk about it. we would not have won that game earlier. Early, before we, we just, we, something would have happened right at the end. We figure out a way to win. We are figuring out a way to win, man. That's what winners do. That's what we do. That's outstanding. That's three. 
We said man six game season. That's number three, gentlemen. Yes, All right, let's go get the next one. Yes, Bring sir. it out. Man, hey, when I, and I know y'all feel me when we say this. When I say family on three, y'all know we together, baby. Family on three. One, two, three. Family. In just his second game back after tearing his Achilles last season, defensive end Romeo Okora tallied two sacks against the New York Jets. You'll hear from Romeo coming up next on his journey back to the football field and we shed a spotlight on Detroit Lions in the community during the season of sharing. Inside the Pride will be right back. Inside the Pride is presented by Soaring Eagle Casino and Resort and sponsored by Priority Health, Kroger, and by Henry Ford Health. So this was a surprise to us this year because we got a chance to come to the stadium all the Christmas. This probably was most of the kids' opportunity to get Christmas. A lot of them were excited to come. <laughs> and so, and they got a chance to select their gifts. People were so nice to the kids and just engaging with them and having conversation that made them feel welcome. Protein powder. That's a great question. Probably in one of these aisles up here. I'm gonna get, uh... Pre-workout? Yeah, pre-workout. I didn't have pre-workout in a long time. Hi, y'all. Great to meet y'all. So being able to get back to my black community feels great for these kids. And realizing how smart kids can be at such a young age, especially at the age of nine years old. Getting back any time is great, but like Christmas time makes you just feel like warm inside, honestly. Wilson looking, looking, stepping up. Gonna get hit, gonna go down. Sack back at the 50-yard line. Romeo Okwara got him. Hey, welcome back, 95. <laughs> it is great to see you. Last Sunday against the Jets, second quarter, second and 20, you escape underneath a tackle for your first sack in, get this, 449 days. Why was it so big for you to get that sack under your belt? Man, that's a lot of days. Um, I think it was just really important for the team uh, at that point in the game. Um, I think it was, right, it was during two minutes, right before the half. And I knew we had to go make a play on defense, um, keep him out of the end zone before, um, before the half. So I was glad I was able to come up with the play there. The celebration after the sack is you taking photos? You're a big photography guy, right? Yeah, yeah, I like taking photos. So I, toss, I, I thought I'd throw a little something in there. It's been a long journey for you to get back onto the football field. October 3rd, 2021, you tore your Achilles. What do you remember most about that moment? Uh, it was pretty devastating at the moment, uh, obviously going through my first major injury in surgery. Um, and it's kind of been a long, long road, long journey, uh, lots of ups and downs, but I'm just glad to be where I'm at in this process. What did people tell you about rehabbing an Achilles injury when you first tore it? Yeah, I mean, obviously I was going through it the same time as Jeff and like, we kind of uh, kind of uh, uh, stayed by each other and kind of kept each other accountable and, uh, throughout the whole process and he helped me out a lot. Um, obviously, he was like three weeks ahead of me, um, so it was it was great having him during that whole, uh, during that whole process. Mm -hmm. Not playing football for over a year, what was the most difficult part of that rehab journey? Yeah, just really just being away from the team and just kind of watching from home, like not being able to travel to games and be around the team. Uh, that was probably the toughest part, um, but just glad to be able to be back uh, where I'm at right now, just back in the locker room with the guys. How much did little brother Julian help bridge that gap between you and the team? A lot, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, just having him at home um, definitely helped a lot through that process and uh, being able to come back to work is uh, definitely great. For you mentally, where did you grow the most after that, that surgery and rehab? Yeah, I think it just kind of taught me a lot about myself. Um, I, I, I definitely wanted that comeback and uh, just kind of prove it to myself really and just to be there for my teammates and um, yeah, I think it was awesome. The comeback came at a great time. Around Christmas time, you were able to go with uh, some kids to Meyer for Shop with a Lion. What was that experience like for you, just getting to see the look on their faces when they got to pick out some gifts? Yeah, that was awesome. Just just getting to spend time with those kids. Uh, they were so happy, uh, just out there trying to shop and not only buy things for themselves, but the family members, their moms, dads, uh, siblings. Uh, so it was a really awesome, awesome uh, experience. You'll be facing the Carolina Panthers on Christmas Eve, so you'll be home for Christmas Day. With that said, what is the best gift you've ever been given? And then we'll do what you've ever gifted. Um, I would say probably a couple years ago, me and my family, we're usually all over the place during Christmas okay. because 
I don't know, one of us is at school here or playing a game here. Um, but we were able to spend Christmas uh, all together in Detroit, which is uh, probably the best present I've ever received. And then given. Given. Ooh, I got my brother a watch uh, a couple years ago that I, I almost kept for myself. <laughs> <laughs> was it a nice Rolex? What was it? It was a Cartier. Looking for win number eight against Carolina Panthers at their place Christmas Eve. They're five and nine right now. What does this team need to do to keep the success going there out on the field? Really have to just keep improving, uh, stay the course, uh, trust ourselves. Uh, I don't think we have to do anything drastically too different. Um, just keep improving and kind of keep uh, attacking practice with the same mindset these past couple of weeks. Welcome back to Inside the Pride. I'm now joined by the head coach, Dan Campbell. And coach, when you were finally able to take in your team's win against the Jets last Sunday, whether it was on the plane or at home, what came to your mind first about your team's performance? Uh, well, I would say this, that it wasn't the cleanest performance we had, but we found a way to win against a very good opponent who was playing for a playoff spot. And man, uh, our defense really uh, you know, won that game for us, particularly early, gave us an opportunity. The offense finishes off. So it was big. Mm -hmm. Your defense will have to show up against the 5-9 and nine Carolina Panthers. Christmas Eve matchup coming up this Saturday. Defensive-wise, how do you make sure that Deontay Foreman, running back, who leads his team and stepped up when the Panthers traded Christian McCaffrey back in October, doesn't slip through the gaps? Yeah, that's... Uh... Well, it's a tall order. Now, I'll say this. Everything for us starts with our two big guys here, all right? And it's not them, but it's us. It's Mac and it's Bugs, because really they set the tone in the run game for us and the edge defenders. We got to do that against this guy. He's a load, and uh, he is a put your foot in the ground and go downhill. And when you're built the way he is with his stature, he's stout, he's strong, he's explosive. Man, you give him a crease, uh, and, and he can go the distance. So we got to be ready for him, but I like our big guys in the middle. Yeah, you mentioned uh, your offense going up against one of the top defenses in the Jets. They didn't allow a single sack. So how do they carry that grit over to the Panthers, especially against defensive end Brian Burns, who has 10 and a half sacks so far this season? Well, look, a lot of that starts with our two tackles. You know, to be where we're at right now, Decker and Sewell are playing at a very high level, Pro Bowl level. Uh, and so this guy here, uh, look, they, we've seen some very good rushers. I think this, this guy's a little unique. He has length. He's built a lot like J.O. Uh, he's got speed off the edge. Uh, he's got, he can spin, he can dip, he can, he's hitting the long arm here, but he, he does have power. So I think, man, look, we, we're going to have our hands full, but I like our matchup and we may need to chip and nudge this guy a little bit so he didn't get off because he is, he's a good rusher. We've faced him a long time. I was in that division for a number of years. Your past game, Jared Goff will go up against another young secondary here. Here it's J.C. Horn there with the Panthers, eighth overall pick in last year's draft. Seven passes defended so far this season, three interceptions. How do you make sure he's a non-factor when it comes to your past game? Listen, we did a lot of homework on him. We really liked this player a lot when he was coming out, you know, because he does. He's got the skill set, and he's pretty tough. Um, he's pretty feisty. He's got ball skills. And so th there's a lot of things he can do here. I mean, really, this is his responsibility. But then he, he sloughs off, just reads the quarterback's eyes, comes up with a big uh, pick here. So he's a good player. But, you know, he's, he is somebody I think we can challenge a little bit. You talked about how much growth your team experienced there against the Jets. You might not have seen them pull off that win a few weeks ago. Uh, what kind of growth do you need to see leading up to Saturday to make sure that your team can get another W on the road? I think this the opponent we're getting ready to face is honestly uh, very familiar to the Jets. I mean, it, it, there's a lot of similarities. Uh, they're going to run it. They're going to play really good defense, uh, ball control. And I think for us it's um, – we got to play a, a similar type game, but let's see if we cleaned up some of the things that happened to us last week. It, it, that's what I want to see. Like the growth's got to be, man, that we did clean up some of these targets. We are making plays on the ball when it's up in the air. And then, hey, let's let the chips fall where they will. You know, you win by one, you win by one. That's all that matters. We win this game. The Detroit Lions will look for win number eight Saturday on Christmas Eve against the Carolina Panthers in Charlotte. Kickoff is slated for 1 p.m. on Fox. Inside the Pride presented by Soaring Eagle Casino and Resort will be right back. Fishing for me is like this beautiful, relaxing therapy. When you're fishing, there's nothing like it's an escape. I 
I don't really want to tell people how to grieve. But I just want to provide an outlet, an outlet that helped me. right here in my hometown, right by uh, the bait shop called Cabin Fever. It's like the staple of Frank Ragnar's childhood. Bike up to Cabin Fever, buy some bait. Then go to Roulette's, the pizza shop right next to the Cabin Fever, go to their buffet, which they gave us a mean discount on. And then, uh, probably why I was pretty big. <laughs> but then uh, either go back to my house and fish the pond by my house or go down to the fishing pier across the lake and fish out here for hours and then just repeat all summer long. I'm so, so, so incredibly grateful and thankful that my dad, my mom, my family consistently brought me to the outdoors. I just love it because I can be out there on the boat or with friends on shore, whatever it is, and you're hanging out and you're relaxing, like you're just enjoying your time and you're just living. There we go. There's a fish. A little one, but it's a start. One buck chuck. Frank Ragnow has been a staple for this Detroit Lions offense for five seasons, anchoring an offensive line that's near the top of the league this season and allowing the Lions run game to rush for over 80 yards in 14 straight games. They haven't done that in 25 years. Tune in to part two of Under the Helmet with Frank Ragnow airing on Inside the Pride next week. We'll be right back. Before we wrap up today's show, we have to get to Roger's retweets. Don't worry, I've got a little bit of holiday festivity built into here as well. But if you guys have not followed my girl, Megan Stefanski yet, you need to. She's a Lions super fan. She goes to every single game. She was out there cheering us on against the New York Jets. I'm sure she'll be at Carolina, 20 degrees at kickoff. This is our Megan Stefanski appreciation tweet. Up next, we're going back to the New York Jets game because Kali Brayman returned his first ever punt for a touchdown. You can see all of the emotion. The best part, he handed that game ball to his mom who was sitting in the first few rows. They go to every single game. Congrats to Khalif on that big career milestone. And shout out to my girl, Cynthia Freeland of the NFL Network. She's a Michigan native. And here she is with her cutie pie Gordy Sporting Alliance jersey. So this is your first and only reminder to get your pets some gifts this holiday season, especially some Lions gear because Detroit is looking for its eighth win on the season coming up against the Carolina Panthers on Christmas Eve. Happy holidays, everyone. We'll see you next week.